Welcome to From Finland with Love. Lovely Lotten is sadly not here. It's only me. And I will be talking about uh, a prop from my first Bond movie. And it used to be my favorite Bond and it's still there. It's still there competing with Live and Let Die and also Woundraker and The Spy Who Loved Me. They are all there. So it's and also Octopus. I've built so many props out of that. So I started to like that movie more and more. But uh, For Your Eyes Only still uh, holds a special place in my heart. It was the first Bond movie that kind of uh, got me indoctrinated and brainwashed. And when I came out from the movie, you know, other people, they come out from the movies, they had a good time and then they go and do something else. For me, it was like mind blowing. A little bit like when I saw Star Wars the first time, it was like, okay, okay, I need to be in that world. Some people have that thing and uh, some people, the Bond community is quite a lot about people who just in a way never grew up. Uh, you, you can grow up in certain areas where you kind of take responsibility of your work and family and stuff. But then there's a part that I think that you don't have to grow up from if you don't want. And uh, and for me, it's been James Bond has been now the biggest thing, and uh, it has escalated into me, in a way, building my own Bond world. I have this Bond room which is filled with Bond stuff, and for me, when I walk into this room, I feel happy all the time, and uh, I think that this room looks like Q's retirement office or something like that. You can see miniatures out of. Uh, all the gadgets he's been designing, all the gadgets that have been imported in the Bond adventures and you can see prototypes and all of that and that's quite exciting to me. Uh, For Your Eyes Only didn't have so many gadgets uh, but it was really cool, it had I, the beginning the, the helicopter scene which was super thrilling and exciting uh, the song I really, really still like. I love all those kind of loungy Bond songs from the from Roger Moore's like later period. Uh, I, I even Moonraker and all of those. I do, of course, love the old Connery ones and even the later ones. But there's something with those loungy ones. I think I like them more than people in average. And uh, the chase scene in the beginning, then with the uh, yellow two CV. Uh, car and uh, everything. It was great fantasy and what I really liked in that was somehow it was scary all the time but James Bond, Roger Moore, he was kind of on top of things. He didn't stress so he kind of felt safe in his company when you uh, went along on these adventures. That movie doesn't have much props but uh, it has one <clears throat> quite uh, interesting gadget which is kind of what everyone's chasing in the movie. It's the ATAC. And the ATAC means Automatic Targeting Attack Communicator. They were bloody lucky that it, it became ATAC, shortened ATAC. I mean, just happened. Fantastic. So with this device, they controlled the Royal Navy's submarines or they could somehow coordinate them and, and so this was a device that you didn't want to give to the enemy because otherwise all your uh, submarines were their, their position was exposed and uh, I'm not an engineer I, I build things uh, usually around the kitchen table so I use styrofoam kind of material or or foam board or or something like that and uh, so I, I and I, I'm not I can't really 3D print much. I can do simple things, but but 3D modeling is not my thing. I'm a graphic designer. I work in 2D usually. So what I did here was I had some help from other builders who knew the dimensions. I talked with uh, a guy called Luca in France, and I talked with Ed Magiani in the U.S. And they they had ideas about uh, the measurements. And uh, I also got info, I got, got pictures, I got a lot of good pictures from Ed Magiani showing the details. And of course I took a lot of screenshots from the movie also. 
And I would say it's pretty accurate now. I haven't done the back side and I don't know if I'm going to do it because I have it displayed like this against the wall. But otherwise it's pretty accurate. Uh, and uh, there were some parts that I didn't, you know, I wouldn't have found out what they are. And one is this, these jumper switches, these switches here, which are really kind of, they, you can push them up and down. Uh, those I got from Ed. I, I don't know where they are from. And the other one is this this uh, this potentiometer that's actually from some kind of machine, and it's actually been used also. It's 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 a part uh, from a fifth element hand grenade. So a lot of builders have collected those for that. So they're kind of difficult to come by. But I was very lucky. So uh, Luca from France uh, sent one to me. So. I first had uh, the wrong kind, but now it's now it's the right kind. These buttons, I actually, it said that they are from uh, Philips keyboard called PC800 or something like that. Uh, I didn't find that, and uh, but I, what I found was uh, uh, um, what do you call it? Cashier's machine is it called that? Uh, that that had these buttons that are actually plastic on top, so I could. Uh, Put the graphics inside it and some of these uh, measurements like this the width this middle width didn't exist so I kind of had to work and extend some buttons but basically with screenshots and stuff I could figure out what they look like and uh, I would say they are pretty accurate the whole box I did with laser cutting so I uh, we had a lot of forth and back conversation with Ed about the measurements and also his friend Christoph who also uh, uh, knows I mean he's also building a lot so there's a lot of expertise in this uh, builder and prop collector community so I got uh, some we had some problems with some measurements we didn't get it working first but then at some point I got it working and I drew uh, the cut lines with Illustrator and sent it to uh, a place that cuts out with laser and water cutting. This was actually with water cutting. So all the parts were cut out. And then it was just to, I actually glued it together with a glue gun. So you can see all these like seams here are not perfect. I just used glue gun. But since you see it from above, I think it looks looks good enough. And uh, so then I uh, bought this, uh, this cash reg register it's called, yeah, cash register. And uh, I, I, I drove uh, three hours forth and back to get it just to get the buttons and then I threw the rest away. So the buttons uh, are plastic and you could put these uh, graphics underneath and I had to build this kind of format and they fit in perfectly when, where, where I did the cutout. So <clears throat> yeah, these are just foam board uh, or foam core, some people call it, with just uh, laminated print on top. I've heard that you can get those also, the real ones, but these I think look pretty good. The last thing that I did was this ATAC uh, uh, logo thingy. The letters turned out a little bit thick, uh, which annoys me a little bit because this uh, acid, uh, acid, uh, what's it called? Uh, corrosion uh, system that I've used actually makes it so that it, they become a little bit wider the letters towards the the flat part and that's why they look a bit thick but anyway and for a graphic designer I almost cried here look at the bad, bad kerning the A should be closer and the C is a bit low but this is what it, what it looks like in the movie it looks like this so I did it uh, to, to look like that but it was painful for a graphic designer uh, then there are a few different versions and, and we have original pictures. We have pictures from Ian Productions and, and some of them, and I've noticed that I think all shots in the movies, they actually have the Philips logo here, the Philips uh, letter logo and then the small kind of uh, symbol there. And I've been wondering that what the heck, like, uh, has it, is it originally a Philips, some kind of calculator or what's the base uh, why do they have Philips there and have they removed it from some pictures because of, we, we see some of those originals don't having it not having it and what I noticed 
or figure out actually Ed told me that he knows the guy who made those so he knows who made them the original ones and uh, so they are made from scratch they are not based on any existing uh, calculator or, or some computer bar they are actually made from scratch so why is the Philips there well when I started looking closer to the movie I noticed it's all about Philips it's it's um, everything is Philips there so you can see that it's product placement like crazy. When you look around, all the computers you see are Philips. You actually see a lot of uh, radios, cassette recorders. You see a small TV in the in the corner of a, a Columbus boat. There's this really cool state of the art small travel TV that actually has a cassette player on the side. You see, even up when they are up on the mountain there in the monastery, there, 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 there are also like you can see Philips speakers there. So it's just Philips, Philips, Philips. So it's kind of funny when you start noticing it. Even Columbus, the the little recording recorder he has in his hand, and and here and there you see Philips design. So Philips has probably paid a lot. I don't know if they have paid or have they just uh, given. Uh, uh, stuff uh, for the filming, but I kind of guess that they have also paid to to be shown there. So that's my guess. That's why this has also been Philips because it's been kind of Philips has been uh, the uh, kind of companion also to then obviously to the the Q branch. So uh, it actually has the Philips logo. So I might have to make the Philips logo. I don't really know exactly how it should be done. It should probably be screen printed, which means that I should have done it before if i do it with a sticker it's gonna not look so good and the little 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 uh, symbol is difficult to do but anyway i think it's quite fun and then then in the movie you see different versions in some uh, pictures actually uh, you can see when they had the fight in the submarine some of these have come off already these uh, these parts and you can actually see a lot of like like scratches and stuff on it Later, uh, when you see it, they are back on again. And then they seem to have some kind of version, which I think is quite smart to have a very kind of light version. So when they fight on this, this is still a little bit heavy. So uh, uh, when Christatos uh, hits, uh, well, he hits Colombo with this, uh, then, then it's obviously a lighter version. And you can also see that version, it doesn't have these indents. So uh, there is another version also, and you can see that when uh, Christatos uh, falls over, trips over, this kind of is against the ground on his hand. It doesn't fall down. It's quite heavy. It wouldn't stay like that. But if it's very, very uh, light, then it's going to stay in his hand like this. So it's probably a really light version. Then you see just Bond picking it up, and at, at, at uh, one point you can see these indents. But then he, when he's about to throw it, then you can see there are no indents again. So he's throwing the light version. So there's been a couple of different versions, but I think that all the movie versions have the Philips logo. So I have to, uh, I have probably have to figure out how to put them there. But in a way, I think this is such a fun prop and it wasn't easy to make because it's difficult to find all these parts. Uh, this wasn't so easy to find the right kind of buttons. It's not exactly the same, but they, they kind of work really well. So that, that's, that wasn't so... Basically cutting out the box and doing this, that's quite easy. But otherwise, um, yeah. So that, that's a cool prop from my, my, my favorite movies. One of the very top favorite movies. I also have a, a nice jacket from that movie, by the way. This is a crew jacket. This is Julian Glover's crew jacket from that movie. And uh, we happen to get Roger Moore's autograph. I would love to get uh, Julian Julian's autograph also in it. And then you can see there's a dub. It's a very sick joke. Yeah, so that's kind of cool. But hey, thank you for watching, and uh, let's keep bonding. Ta-da! Have fun.